I'd like to start by asking you guys to do something. Who, who here has a little bit of anxiety or has had some anxiety before presenting by a show of hands? And who here is presenting today, if you keep your hands up? Okay, great. So I'd actually like to have you engage in something with me. So for a moment, if you don't mind, put down your laptops. And I want you to suspend disbelief for just one moment. We're going to do a breathing exercise where what I'd like you to do is on the breath in through your nose, you say, I am, silent to your show, silently to yourself. And as you exhale, you say, relaxed. So let's all do it one, one time. Ready? I am, breathe in, breathe out, relax. One more time. I am. Relax. Now I know what you're thinking here, that this is crazy, but scientific evidence actually shows that our brains don't know how to tell the difference between what is actually happening to us and what we imagine. So therefore, we have the power through our minds, through our thoughts, as well as through our behaviors, to actually control the way we feel and, and, and through that, really to control biological responses to stress. So today what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a series of techniques to actually go about controlling your mind and your body to manipulate these biological responses to stress. So we have a quick agenda and what we like to do is talk about this in terms of how to manage the mind and how to manage the body. And we're going to offer a buffet of techniques today. What we want to do is we want to offer some that will take some practice and some that are immediately implementable today. And what we'd like to do with this is give you an opportunity to try some of these out. And I encourage you to try some of these out if you're presenting today. So with that, I'll hand it over to Patricio and Olivia to start us off. So the way that we think about presentations, or the way that we approach them or frame them in our minds, significantly influences how nervous we are when presenting in front of a public. It turns out that many of us think about presentations as performances, such as acting. In, when you're acting, you're given a certain set of lines that you have to say exactly in a precise way, in a precise time, in a precise place. This means that there's a right way and a wrong way to acting. This leads to actors feeling fear that they might not be saying things in the right way and ultimately leads to performance anxiety. So we as presenters, if we frame our presentations like performances, we might have some of this fear creeping in. What I, wanted to suggest, what, what I want to suggest to you is that instead we reframe presentations as conversations. And this is great because normally people are not nervous about having a conversation, whereas we may be nervous about performing. So, but it's also great because pr presentations are more like conversations than they are performances. To begin with, there is no right or wrong way. You don't have to adhere to a certain script. There may be a better way to communicate things, but ultimately you have some flexibility. The other reason why presentations are more like conversations is that it's actually a dialogue in a conversation. So it's not just you in front of an audience in the spotlight, it's you engaging with your audience and receiving feedback from them, even though it's, it may not be verbal. So what I want to leave you with is three things that you can start doing to make your presentations more conversational. The first one is do an outline. Don't memorize your speech. Practice each chunk of the outline and it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect or exactly the same each time. The second thing I want to recommend is practice conversationally. Instead of standing in front of a mirror or in front of a camera, sit down, if you can, with a friend and talk through your presentation. The third one is interact with your audience. You can do this by asking questions, taking polls, using the word you a lot, and even using the names in your audience if you can. So these three things will help you make your presentations more conversational and will help you take away some of that anxiety. With that, I'll hand it over to Olivia. So Patricia has talked to you about reframing presentations as conversations. <coughs> I'm now going to talk about reframing anxiety itself. What do you do if you feel anxious and just can't help it? One great way to deal with this is just to recognize that what you're feeling is completely normal. 
you can say to yourself, oh, here are those anxious feelings again. Now, I've found personally that this takes some practice and that in fact it'll be several presentations before just recognising that you are feeling anxious is enough to make you stop feeling anxious. So I'm going to add to the buffet of techniques that we're presenting to you today by talking about some specific quick fixes that come from recognising that anxiety is a, both a natural biological and evolutionary response. So, here you'll see a hormone. This hormone is oxytocin, and it's incredibly powerful. It's talked about in some of the sort of public literature, and particularly in the popular press, as being the love hormone. And more recently, research has shown that it in fact can help to reduce levels of adrenaline and cortisol and stress. So how do you go about generating this magical hormone? One way is to turn to a friend and hug them. It may not always be appropriate to do that before you go into a presentation. So an alternative is just to find a supportive audience member, walk over to them and shake their hand before they start. Again, that might not work in every situation. So going with the buffet of techniques, in addition to just being able to hug it out, which may not always work, we'd say that you should also recognise that evolutionary uh, behaviour has led to us feeling these feelings of stress prior to presentations, and that it's actually an adaptive behaviour that you feel that you're anxious about your status in the group. How will people perceive you? This is partly because the human mind concentrates on the future rather than thinking about the present. So a further technique that you can use is to engage in what is known as flow activities. These flow activities can be things like doing, one thing that's been suggested is 100 press-ups before you go on, which is a bit much for me, frankly. <laughs> so you might go outside the room in my case and try and sing. You might play a game on your computer, find something humorous to watch. Or alternatively, I would ask you to all to say with me this limerick. So I'll count us in to three. And the idea of this technique is that you have to focus on what you're saying so much that you can't actually worry about what's coming next. So, one, two, three. I slit a sheet, a sheet I slit, and on that slitted sheet I sit. And repeat. Um, and with that, I'll hand over to some of the more physical sides uh, of managing your anxiety. Thanks. Fake it until you become it. <laughs> but what are we faking? There's strong evidence that your body can change your mind. The way you pose projects a certain image. And if you project power, you can feel more powerful. And you can use this feeling of power to become more confident before your presentation. So how does this work? Let's just do a little experiment. You're all sitting down at the moment. Um, just lean forward a little bit. Put your elbows on your legs. Put your right hand on your left knee. Your left hand on your right knee. And say, I am confident. I am confident. Feels a bit unnatural, doesn't it? Now, stand up. Extend your arms. Make yourself as big as you can. And say, I am confident. I am confident. Doesn't this feel much more natural? <laughs> this is the difference between a high power pose and a low power pose. And if you engage in high power poses before your presentation, you can feel a lot more confident during the presentation. Scientifically, how does this work? Posing in a high power way um, makes your testosterone levels go up. Testosterone is a hormone that is linked to dominance and masculinity. At the same time, posing in a high power way as opposed to a low power way makes your um, cortisol level goes down. Um, which, and cortisol is a stress hormone, so you feel a lot less stressed. Um, so I encourage all of you, before your presentation, fake it until you become it. All right, for our last couple techniques, I'd like to talk about diaphragmatic breathing, or more informally known as belly breathing. And so what does this mean? How, do, how does this actually help? Well, 
By doing this type of breathing, we can actually stimulate our parasympathetic nervous system from our sympathetic. And that means that we go from the fight or flight mode into the rest or digest mode. So what this does is it actually relaxes your muscles, allows oxygen to flow more fully through your body, and we can actually physically not be in a stress state by breathing this way. So that's pretty powerful. So quickly, I'd like to go through and actually teach you how to do this type of breathing, diaphragmatic breathing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna breathe in through our nose, we're gonna hold it for a count of four, we're gonna gently hold that breath for seven, and then we're gonna release it through the mouth for a count of eight. And a, and a tip would be is, feel like you're breathing in all the room in the air, and when you exhale, your stomach should literally feel like it's tightened at the end. So maybe put your hand on your stomach to let it release out. Think of yourself like a baby. That's how babies breathe, that's how animals breathe. So let's try one of these. So breathe in, slowly count to four, hold it for seven, And now exhale through the mouth, audibly if you'd like. That's one breath. If you're able to do three of those before any presentation, your body will actually feel calmer. It's just the natural biological response. Now we only have a couple more minutes, but I want to also introduce one technique which is about mindfulness. Bringing your presence to, to the current moment, oops, and if through that being able to actually recenter yourself. And this is sort of an idea of non-judgmental awareness, and this is key to actually reducing stress and bringing a state of calm. So what you can do with this 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 technique is you name five things that you see, and then five things that you hear. Then you go again and you do it with four things that you see and four things that you hear. And as you go closer to one, you'll recognize that those intrusive thoughts, those feelings of anxiety, will all just melt away. With that, I'd like to tell you, Please try these out and let us know what you think. We'd love to hear more from you and see which ones work and which ones don't. Any questions?